Hey y'all, welcome back to the Southern Cottage. It is Connie and we're back in the craft room. It is mum season and today's video is all about the military braid. And to me, the military braid is one of the easiest braids to do. Uh, it's just super simple. I'm gonna show you how to be deliberate with your ribbon placement. I'm going to show you how to easily start and complete a military braid and then I'm going to show you how to do a double military braid without having to fight with all of your ribbon and last but not least I'm going to show you how to make a mock double with some of those store-bought military braids let's get started okay let's talk about the basic single military braid Like I said, to me, it's one of the simplest braids that you can make. I do not cut my ribbon. I leave it on the spool. And I've seen people start their ribbons by making a loop here and then making a loop here and then putting them together and then starting it. But I found that that's too much for me um, and I've also found that if it's too much then I just don't do it I have to find a simpler way so let me show you my favorite way to start a military braid so I'm only doing a two ribbon braid you can definitely get into layering I'm not going to do that in this video so I'm going to take a green and a white and then you just put them at right angles to each other just like that and then I'm going to hold on to this and make a loop. The size of this loop is going to be determined by the size of your ribbon. You just want to make sure that your ribbon is going to be able to go through there. If it's a little bit larger, y'all, it doesn't matter. This is the very start of the braid. It's either going to be stapled to the top of your mum underneath where the mum head goes or it's going to be at the bottom where you're going to put a trinket or a bow the start and the finish of this ribbon makes no difference okay so then it is as simple as pulling this up making a loop and sliding that loop through the first loop that you made and I like to hold on to it like this and then you take the next side make a loop exact same thing put it into that loop and then I hold it down here I don't pinch it to where it's gonna crease I just hold it and then slide. Slide this one down until it is nudged right up against this ribbon. Then go again. And you're just going left to right. Hold on to it down here and slide this ribbon down. While you've got that in your hand, make you another loop and put it through. Slide that down just until it is snugged up to the side of that ribbon and you're just going left to right alternating which side you make a loop with and I will sit and make I, I know my school colors are green and white they're black and silver so I will start out with just the green and white and then I will make a military braid that is two or three yards long. I don't do start and stop. I just keep on going. And then I will have this long military braid that I don't have to make sure that I'm making the correct sizes for my mums. I cut it and staple to whatever mum that I'm using it on. So I will have rolls of military braids ready to go on my mums. So it is as simple as this. See how long that is? Really doesn't matter. However's easiest for you, I use opposite side fingers to hold that up to keep it straight. And y'all just keep going. 
I've made some smaller military braids to go on ring mums and shoe mums and little tiny garters. But this one is, this one is a yard long. Now for a wrist mum, I'll only use that much. I only want that much hanging down the side. And let me show you how I'm going to make this long one into different sections. So say I need a six inch piece. That six inches, I'm going to staple three across there, and I'm going to move up just a touch. Staple three across, and then I'm going to take my scissors and cut it right in the middle. And I have a custom length braid. This is going to go under the mum head. This is going to go down at the bottom with a trinket or a bow. None of these staples are going to show. My braid is secure. This is not going to show. Y'all, to me, this is the easiest way to make a lot of braids that you can customize the length. And you don't have to worry about what length that is until you go to put it on your mum. And I just roll these up. They stay nice. Here's another one that I've done. Super simple. This is a more manly version, but this one is about six foot long. I have enough small military braids for multiple wrist mums and spirit pins and ring mums and shoe mums, all of that. Got it right here. Now. You saw how I put these together. I'm going to show you how to be deliberate with your ribbon placement. I'm going to set this to the side, and I'm going to bring this one forward. This is just a small piece that I cut for demonstration purposes, and this is how this ribbon is going, this braid is going to come out. These ribbons have a shiny side and a dull side. You're going to see both when you're only using two ribbons and you're not layering them. How you turn your ribbons is going to determine where the pretty side ends up in your ribbon in your braid and where the dull side ends up. So if you have your pretty sides up when you make this loop, that means the pretty side is going to go down the center of your braid and the dull side is going to be on the outside. Okay, let me bring up this one. Now, I have dull sides of these ribbons facing up. Pretty side, dull side. I made the loop and I have both of these with the dull side up. So when I make a chain or a braid out of this one, then my dull sides are going to go in the middle and the shiny side, the pretty sides are going to be on the outside. Y'all, and this will come into play whether you're making a single or a double military braid. So this is super simple. There's no holding of anything. You don't have to fight with these ribbons. Put one staple in and you are ready to start making your braid. I can't tell you how much time this saved me after I figured out, well, I just need to put a loop in there and put a staple. Now, while trying to learn how to do the double military braid, of course, I watched Hyla with Crafty Bug. Um, she is my go-to for all of my braids. She is fantastic, and uh, she is a great teacher. I went to try to find a tutorial on a double military braid and she gave a great tutorial but she was fighting with her ribbons at the beginning and I'm like there no we can't we can't be doing that because I know I'd be just throwing it away I'm just being honest if I can't start it simply and get going I'm an instant gratification kind of girl then I just won't deal with it so I had to find a simpler way, and I knew that I started mine differently than she did, and I wondered if I could do that with my doubles, and I can. 
So I'm going to show you now how to make that braid. And y'all don't worry, these small pieces can be uh, placed in to my mums, on even, even on smaller mums, just as little accent pieces at the top of another braid. They can just be stapled on. These will not go to waste, I promise you. And there we go. And I have the pretty sides up on this one. This is how they're going to go. When I do this, Okay, I had to go back and watch Hyla's videos on how to make a double military braid. And I decided to use, there is a fly in here. Cow pasture is that way. Y'all can't help the flies. We're just going to have to deal with it. Um, anyway, I decided to use four different colors so I could keep them separate. It's easier for me to deal with that way. So I used green, black, white, and silver. And if you'll notice where they cross over, now that is the outside of a single military braid. That is the outside portion. So this white portion here is the same as this white portion right here on this outside. So how you place your ribbons is going to determine if it's the shiny side, the pretty side, or the dull side. And these, the center section kind of overlaps the middle a little bit. So you really can't see this ribbon as much. And I did not like the fact that I did not have the silver showing on the outside. Flip it over and you've got all pretty sides. So this is what I mean by be deliberate with your ribbon placement. This will definitely be used. Um, it probably will be used this way, but when most people do a double military braid, they do it using this side out. And I'm going to show you how to achieve pretty all here. Okay? So, <laughs> while trying to figure that out, I went ahead and made another one, but y'all, it turned out the same. Let me show you how we're going to do this. We're going to do it, ex we're going to start it exactly the same way as the um, single. And this is what I want. I want the silver here, the shiny side out. I want the pretty side of the black out over here. And I want the pretty side of the green and the white right here. To achieve that, you need to have dull sides facing up. dull sides facing up. Okay? Now, to do a double, let me move this out of the way. Start it the exact same way. Dull sides facing up. I'll show you here, and then we will continue with that one. So I have the dull side of the black, the dull side of the white, and if you need to, you can go ahead and put a staple here just to keep it together. But I am fold, making a loop with this finger. Make a loop and fold it over. You're still going to have your dull sides out. And then put a staple. Set that down and bring up your other two colors. Dull sides up. I want this on the outside of my braid. So whatever you make your loop with initially, that is what's going to be on the outside of your military braid. This one is going to be what's going to cross over the middle. 
So this silver is going to be the outside of this braid. So I'm making a loop and it's just enough for this to slide through. And that's going to work. And I'm just going to put a staple right here. Y'all, like I said before, it doesn't matter what this looks like. It's all going to be covered up. I don't worry about it too much. Now, to make a double and to make it simple on yourself, start out like this. Left side, right side. Take your right ribbon, and for me, that it's this green one, and you're going to lay it over top of the white. So you're going to now have your black and green going this way, your white and silver going this way. They're going to run parallel to each other. Put it up to where this just runs right next to it, right next to it, and y'all take it and put a staple right here. Let me make sure I'm going to put two staples. Because like I said, you're not going to see it. Now, we are going to alternate back and forth. We're going to do two here and two on this side. So I'm going to take my black, make a loop, and slide it through the white. And just hold it there. You're not going to be able to tighten this one up right now. And then I'm going to take the white. We're only working the black and white together. The black and white will always work together, and then the green and silver will always work together. Okay? That is tightened down. Now, you have this loop. Take your green, make a loop, and it's going to fight me because y'all are watching. It's not really. I just needed to change my hands. Make a loop and go through the silver. And then bring the silver up through the green. I'm going to hold right here and tighten this down. Okay. You're going to end with your loops pointing the same direction. Now we're going to go back to the left side to the black and white. Loop with the black, slide it through the white, hold it, and then tighten that white down. And then you're going to take the white, make a loop, and go through the black. Tighten it down. Next, we're going to go over to the green and silver. You're going to take the green, make a loop, put it right through your silver. Pull that silver down. And while you've still got it in your hand, make a loop with it and put it through the green. Now, both of our loops are ending on the same side. It's going to feel loose a little bit in the beginning, but y'all promise you it will tighten up and be secure. Back to the green and bl uh, the black and white. So loop, pull the black through. I'm going to pull this white down and my silver is curling up and giving me problems. There we go. And then I'm going to take this white and go up through the black. and just tighten that down. And now we're back to the other side. This silver, y'all, is a, a curly type ribbon, um, but it's the perfect size for this, so I wanted to use it. You're not normally going to have this unless you're using this type of ribbon. And it looks really good on these mums, all right? Put the green through the silver, and now the silver through the green. And I did cut these because I knew that I was going to be demonstrating here, and I didn't want a whole lot hanging off. So now we're going back to the black through the white, and I'm almost done with this because I'm almost out of my white ribbon. Tighten that down, make a loop, and that loop is not going to complete. So I'm just going to push that all the way through and tighten that black down. Since I have plenty of green, I'm going to go ahead and finish this side. Tighten that silver down. And then make your loop. Now, we're going to go ahead and end this here. You see how we have 
shiny side of the black on the outside we have shiny of the green shiny of the white shiny of the silver they're all exactly where I wanted them to be now to end this and this is for any military braid we're just gonna have to do it on two sides I am going to just pull this through hold it and then I'm going to take the green and pull it through make a little X marks the spot right there and put a staple and then I'm going to trim off these two pieces same thing over here the white is already uh, cut because I ran out I'm going to pull the black through make an X at the bottom line up your staples if you want to but y'all we're gonna put something there doesn't matter and then cut them off that is how you end any military braid and that is how you make a double military braid it is super simple to start when you have your ribbons stapled and ready to go same thing here guys if I wanted to do it the opposite direction if I wanted the green on the left and the black on the right just move it over and it will give you a totally different look here's the back side and you have all the dull on this side put your shiny where you want it so if you want to use this side put your shiny side facing up which means when you start dull sides are facing up if you want the shiny to be on the back then you have your shiny sides facing up so it is as simple as that guys I'm gonna go ahead and braid this and now I'm going to show you how to do a mock double braid with store-bought or single military braids okay these are two store-bought military braids I think either these are store-bought no these are store-bought yeah I didn't make these um, but I put some painters tape at the top and stapled it on just so I'd have a place to hang them because I like to hang these up anyway these are two plain single military braids so I use these on a lot of my mums um, especially the less expensive mums but if you have a great big mum and you don't want to make a double military braid or you have a bunch of these like I do and you just want to bulk them up we're gonna make a faux double military braid and it is super super simple we are just going to take either the same color or a contrasting color and weave it in and out of these so I have two side by side I'm going to start going under this first loop and I did cut this because it doesn't matter how many times you can loop it through uh, you can cut and glue and if you wanted to start with a smaller piece you definitely could and actually I'm gonna do that I'm gonna cut this in half we're gonna start with a small piece and I'm gonna show you how to start and stop so up one side and then go down the other I did this on another one um, and I used a black uh, mum ribbon and it was a little bit more difficult to get through it worked it just didn't slide as nicely as this one is so I'm just going up through the bottom and then down and over and down through the top loop right here let me flip this over so you can see what the back is looking like you're just going up and down with this and then I'm gonna try and do it this way yeah up through and down this is going 
a whole lot quicker than it was with the black ribbon because this is slick and I'm just peeking through the bottom to make sure that I get it through that one and down and then when you come to the end of a piece go down with it and I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to put a touch of glue right here now you're not going to be able to see where it starts and where it stops on either side if you do it this way so just going to give that a minute to grab and then cut it off. Now I'm going to take this piece that I cut off, put a touch of glue right here, and I'm going to slide this in there, and I'm just going to go a very little bit, just to where it's enough to catch, and you've added that on. Sometimes it's easier to work with smaller lengths of this ribbon, um, this one is sliding pretty easily, so here's a decently long piece. Here's what the front side is looking like, and if you feel like you need to adjust these a little bit, this is not attached yet, so you have a little bit of play, but once you get it on there, and I'm sure you're going to be putting bling on here, you're not going to notice that there's a slight difference in these loops. Okay continue on and yes these are offset that's not a problem either down and up now that you've seen how to start these and stop these I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera come back when I'm done and show you the finished product Okay, so I decided not to go all the way down with this. And just to show you different ways you could do this, you do not have to connect these all the way down. You do not have to do that. Just go halfway, go three quarters of the way, stop it, and leave these two pieces hanging and put trinkets on the bottom of each one. You can take these and bring them around the back and make a loop. I think that would look super cute and add a lot of dimension to your mum. Looking at that, it might be cool to only do the middle of one of these. Now that would be huge. I was thinking that you do this on each side and make it look like a dog bone. It would have to be way shorter in the middle. But yeah, something to think about. I like the fact that you have the option of putting them together or keeping them apart. Now, down the middle, you have all the, this open space if you wanted to take something, and I've just got this laying here and run it straight down in between, you could definitely do that. You could take some bling and run down each side. The possibilities are endless with this. And it's the same for this one. On the double braid, take your bling and run it down each side. Y'all, I just had this laying there. Run it down each side of that centerpiece just to accentuate it because this and the actual width of the braid is what makes this thing pop. So make it pop more. Accentuate that centerpiece. Okay, guys, that's it. Um, I'm going to link Hyla's uh, video on the double military braid in the description. Um, I hope you got something out of this. They really are super simple to do. And it took me a minute, but I finally wrapped my brain around on how to be deliberate with the placement of my ribbons. 
and where they're going to land when I make the braid itself. So anyway, y'all, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Please give me a thumbs up, share, whatever you can do. I'd appreciate it, and I will see y'all soon. Bye.